I want to get back to this controversial decision by Environment Minister Tanya Plibersek to block construction of a tailings dam for a billion dollar gold mine development based on last minute contested Indigenous cultural heritage grounds. According to the mining company Regis Resources, the decision has killed off the project planned for Blaney in the central west of New South Wales, despite the local Aboriginal Land Council saying they've got no issues with the proposal. Now, worst of all, the Environment Minister Tanya Plibersek, who made the decision, says she can't reveal the Indigenous cultural secrets that were revealed to her that informed her decision. She fronted media today. There is nothing to stop the project going ahead. What I expect is that the tailings dam should be built in another location. The project proponent has chosen the cheapest and easiest location. The cheapest and easiest location has unacceptable impacts on cultural heritage. Really, she's a mining engineer now? And really, this is what she's saying, work up a, another dam proposal over how many years, costing how much more money, and get all the environmental and Indigenous approvals and then have that one knocked over at the last minute too by secret claims? The Prime Minister is also oversimplifying the issue. The mine uh, has not been uh, opposed. Uh, what we're talking about is a tailings dam and the, the company itself put forward a range of uh, options that were considered and they should uh, work uh, to ensure the project can go ahead. But the New South Wales Premier is a little more realistic. We are in discussions with the mine proponent and we've said very specifically that we don't want them to start from the beginning. We don't want them to go all the way back to 2019. We believe, we're hopeful that there's a modification of the development application, which means that there can be hopefully, and I'm not promising this, but expedited approval. Yeah, what a shambles. Let me bring in Jacinta Nambajimba Price. She's the Shadow Minister for Indigenous Australians. Joins us live from Alice Springs. Good to talk to you again, Jacinta. Good to talk to you too, Chris. Look, these issues, these cultural heritage issues, I've got a long history in these because I exposed the fabrication of the secret women's business of Hindmarsh Island that was used by people to block a bridge project way back in the early 1990s. How is it good enough for the minister to say that she's been given this information, this culturally significant information, but she can't reveal it to anyone? Look, that's exactly right. And uh, it's her responsibility, I think, to give that information, hand that information over to uh, the Orange Aboriginal Land Council, who, uh, you know, they're the authoritative uh, body to do the checks and balances with regard to um, those probabilities. And uh, they've, they've stated that there was, uh, as far as they're concerned, uh, there wasn't any cultural heritage uh, concern around this particular site. So, yeah, I think it is absolutely the Minister's responsibility, given that she's taken advice uh, from those who have put, put the EDO, the Environmental Defender's Office, once again, rears its ugly head, is behind this uh, with the group of people uh, and, and they're, they're the person who's heading that group who claims to be both Gamilaroi and Wiradjuri, um, that, uh, you know, it's because of their reasons that she's gone ahead and uh, shut this mine down, this now, project. It, it, look, it's such a problem. And as you know, with lots of mining projects, uh, especially in, in remote areas, there can be contested claims, different claims of, of sacredness, if you like, from different Aboriginal groups. And anthropologists and experts deal with all that. And mining companies have to try and get their way through all that sort of thing. But in this case, that the Orange Land Council was happy with it. Now, now I'm not going to make any ac accusations in this case because there hasn't been a proper inquiry, but what I've seen before, for instance, in High Marsh Island is, is that environmentalists and local white people want to stop a development and then they get to raise objections when they lose out on environmental grounds. They, they talk to Indigenous people about raising objections and when they're all, uh, they were all satisfied, then at the last straw they came up with some extra, some, some outsiders, some different Aboriginal um, cultural significance and that was the secret women's business that was, that was fabricated and put up and, hey, press 
Presto, they got to ban the development. How do we know what's gone on in this case? Is it just the minister investigating, weighing up the claims of various groups and who else wanted to stop this? Or, or should there be some official legal entity that actually tests all the claims? <laughs> Well, uh, if you're speaking about a special legal entity, that legal entity is the Orange Aboriginal Land Council in this instance. Uh, you know, and, and that, is, that is why uh, these land councils uh, have been developed in the first place, uh, is to uh, find out that level of information from the traditional owners of the area. Uh, and as they keep saying, uh, you know, I've heard Roy R.C., say over again, there wasn't a problem with this. They don't know uh, who the woman is at the head of all of this uh, in terms of the, the other corporation that, you know, anyone can create a corporation as well, but it is the land councils that are the legal entity uh, that determine, yeah. uh, make these determinations on behalf of traditional owners. So isn't it the case then that just, just the ministers should say that the, the Orange Land Council is the appropriate body? We take their word for it that there are no cultural heritage problems. The tailing dam can go ahead and, and, and we'll, we'll dismiss these claims from this, this other small and, and, and really, in some ways, unknown group. Let's just say it's the Environmental Defender's Office. Let's just say that, shall we? Because that's who's behind it. Wow. That's who was behind uh, the shutting down of the Barossa project up in uh, the Northern Territory. Uh, they brought in, um, you know, claimed traditional owners who weren't. They were taken to the High Court. Uh, they were found to exploit uh, Indigenous people, and they're doing it once more. The minister's fall. She's either falling for them or just using them as an excuse for this um, determination. She's got it completely wrong, and so does yeah. the Prime Minister. Uh, let's face it, 